Alright guys, welcome back to the channel. If you're new, my name is Bobby. Guys, today we're going to continue with the Christian street preachers that attack Islam. Today's candidate is the evangelical Ray Comfort and he will be harassing a Muslim girl about her religion. Guys, help me expose those people by liking the video, sharing, subscribing to the channel and supporting through the links in the description box. With no further ado, let's have a look. You're going to heaven when you die? This, inshallah, means God willing. That is inshallah. our goal. So you don't know? It's all about what you've done and good oh, and so what you've done So you don't bad know? Life. You're not God? Of course, Christians believe to know that they will be saved through the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. However, truly, nobody has any idea whatsoever. This is an assumption. This is what your doctrine teaches. The doctrine says your sins are forgiven because Jesus died for you. That is it. If you accept it, then you enter into the belief that you are saved. But realistically, speaking you have absolutely no clue if you're saved or not that is up to god we can never determine whether or not it's a yes or it's a no so it's a matter of your good outweighs you? your bad absolutely and i think that's just not just um uh, this um, fake just soft but voice. i think that's universal in all so do you believe in hell i do believe in hell yes so who's going to hell is it those who don't do enough good to outweigh their bad Allah is the one, I can only tell you. Allah is the person who will judge this. So here's a question for you. If I'm in a court of law and I'm found guilty of a serious crime and I say to the judge, judge, I know I'm guilty, but here's my defense. I've done a lot of good things and I'm hoping my good things will outweigh the bad. The judge is going to say to you, this is a court of law. I'm not going to judge you on the good things you've done. I'm here to judge you on your crimes. So when it comes to man's courts, good works are irrelevant. A judge will only judge you on your crimes. And it's exactly the same with God. We're judged for our sins. And okay, not... okay, hold up. So first and foremost, they're anthropomorphizing God yet again, as they do with Jesus. In the Christian doctrine, Jesus is God, astaghfirullah. And moreover now, out of a sudden, God is a judge, just like a human judge. And he will only judge you on your crimes. Says who? So by that standard, by your own definition, Ray, this means no matter what good you have done in your life, it doesn't matter whatsoever. It's not worth a thing because you're only getting judged on your bad deeds. So how does this make any sense whatsoever? It truly describes that everything that was good that you have done doesn't count. <laughs> so therefore I don't even have to bother doing anything good, obeying the rules. But everything evil that I did does count. This is what I'm going to get judged upon. However, hold up, here comes the trick. I'm not going to get judged after all because Jesus died for my sins. So ultimately you're telling me, no matter what good I have done in my life, it doesn't matter whatsoever. Everything bad that I did doesn't matter either because Jesus died for us. Congratulations, this is an easy way out. The good things we this do. This is so extremely so ridiculous. Questions. Wow. Do you man. think you're a good person, morally? I like to think what, I've, what I can bring, I'm doing good. Let's go through the Ten Commandments, the Law of Moses, and see how you're going to do on Judgment Day. How many lies have you told in your life? So I would say I do my best to try to say, to always be honest. But you've told a few lies. I've been honest as much as I can, but yes, here and there, you know, we've said, what did you eat for lunch? No, when I really have. So, little white lies. Little white lies. So what do you call someone who tells lies? They say that you are, you don't, you're not somebody who tells the truth. A liar. <laughs> somebody who does not tell the truth. Yeah, that's true. She refused to call herself a liar. So I knew I was going to have a tough time, and you'll see I did. So what do you do in such a case? Well, I resorted to giving my own testimony, which can be very powerful to illustrate the exceeding sinfulness of sin. Give it to us. Someone once said, the man with an experience is not at the mercy of a man with an argument. Now, have you ever stolen something in your whole life, irrespective of its value, in your whole life? If classifying me taking my cousin's shirt so I can wear for tomorrow's um, outing, then you Stole yes. your cousin's shirt? Yeah, but after I told her about it. <laughs> so you stole and then told her? Yeah. Have you ever used God's name in vain in your whole life? I do my best not to. Jesus said if you look with lust, you commit adultery in the heart. Have you ever looked with lust? You know, we have an Islamic perspective. Yeah. You know, there's a, a thing, especially for men and both equal Lord women. You, you know, there's one glance you're allowed, which is why um, Muslim men, you know, um, a lot of 
I don't want to say Muslim men. I don't want to put that as a, you know, as a collection. But, you know, men are told as equally as women, when you see the opposite gender, try to lower your gaze to avoid such thoughts. But yes. even though God also says you will not be accounted for such thoughts, the only thing you'll be accounted for is if you take action with these thoughts. Well, Jesus yeah. said, if you look with lust, you commit adultery in the heart. Yeah, that's exactly what she told you, man. We are lowering our gaze because we do not want to lust with our eyes. We do believe that Jesus is a prophet of Islam, that he was a Muslim, and therefore this statement itself would be valid within Islam as well. We are commanded, after all, to pray just like Jesus did, and we're commanded to lower our gaze just like Jesus did. Prophet, they don't get prophet it. Prophet cannot lie. When I realized I'd broken those commandments, I'd lied, I'd stolen, I'd looked with lust a lot, as most of us have, I realized on Judgment Day I'd be guilty, and the Bible says all liars will have their part in the lake of fire. No thief, no blasphemer, no adulterer, no fornicator will inherit God's kingdom. So I realized I was in big trouble, and I found out something incredible. This was <laughs> nearly 50 years ago, that the Creator God provided a Savior. When Jesus suffered the on the cross, God. just before he died, he cried out, it is finished. He was saying paid in full. We broke God's law, Jesus paid the fine. The Bible says death is actually wages. It says the wages of sin is death. death. In other words, God is paying you in death for your sins. Like a judge looks at a heinous criminal that's murdered multiple people. He says to him, you have earned the death sentence. This okay, is okay, okay, let's rewind this. So we have a God that is a judge. However, this God created the rules as well that he will judge upon. He has certain rules that you should not steal, that you should not lie, that you should not kill, that you should not lust. And if you transgress those rules, this judge that created those rules will judge you. However, instead of judging you now, he sends his own son. However, here comes the twist. His son is actually the God himself. It is himself incarnated. And now God is killing himself in order to forgive you the sins that you committed, breaking his laws that he established in the first place. Yes, this makes perfect sense. Wages. That's this amazing. This is what's due to you. This is what we're paying you. Mm. And sin is so serious to a holy God, he's given us the death sentence. You're on capital punishment. Your death will be evidence to you that God is deadly serious about sin. And yet the Bible says he's okay. the lover. Are animals sinning? And if they're not sinning, why do they die? Of your soul, provided a savior who took the punishment. We broke God's law. Jesus paid the fine. If you're in court and you've got speeding fines, a judge will let you go if someone else pays them. He'll say, you're guilty, but someone's paid your fine. You're out of here. Well, God can take the death sentence off you all because of what Jesus did on the cross. He rose from the dead after he Even within your own ideology, theology, this doesn't make any sense whatsoever because Jesus is God in your worldview, remember? So it's not somebody else paying the fine. It is God himself. For the sin of the world. It doesn't make any sense. And now if you'll simply repent of your sins and trust in him, not your goodness, but trust in him, God promises he'll grant you everlasting life as a free gift, not because you're good, but because he's good and kind and rich in mercy. Are you basing this off the old? Or okay, but if he is kind and rich in mercy, by the way, in Islam, we believe that he is the most merciful, Ar-Rahman. So if he is so full of mercy, why would he have to sacrifice his son or himself or anybody for that reason in order to forgive sin? If he is truly, fully merciful, he can decide if he will forgive us or not. To the now modernized um, Testament. God's promise in the Old Testament was to destroy death and the New Testament tells us how he did it. And when you say modernized, I've got access to the original Greek language, so I see that it hasn't changed. So yeah, the Old Testament, God says, I'll destroy death for humanity. New Testament tells us how he did it. Okay, but the Quran says every soul shall taste death. And matter of fact is, we all gonna die. So how did he defeat death if we all gonna die after all? And moreover, you mentioned the Greek manuscripts there. We all know that Jesus did not speak Greek, but Aramaic. And his followers back then surely did not speak Greek. And moreover, they couldn't read or write if they were truly fishermen. And this is what the New Testament says. So if they were fishermen, they were surely illiterate, and therefore they wouldn't be able to write in Greek. That being said, we know that the New Testament has not been written by the followers of Jesus Christ. And therefore, how can we put our trust in it? Creator didn't leave us in darkness because the scriptures say he'll not be bribed on judgment day by our good works. It says this, it's not by works of righteousness that he saves us, but according to his mercy. And the only way a judge can show mercy is if someone pays a fine and satisfies justice. 
When Jesus said, it is finished, he was saying paid in full. That means you don't have to work to try and earn eternal life because it can't be earned. It's a free gift of God. So, dear Muslim girl, don't worry about a thing. Just put off your hijab and go drink alcohol and have bacon afterwards. You, believe you don't have to do God anything. Do you believe that he's a prophet? Or do you believe there's a higher um, power that Jesus reports to? I believe the Bible says God was manifest in the flesh. He created himself a body and filled the body as a hand fills a glove, specifically to take the punishment for our sins. It took a perfect human being the to be a lamb of, of God to be sacrificed for mm. our sins. It could not be a sinner. But I could never convince you that Jesus is And God. even this doesn't make sense if you believe in the Trinity, because what you're saying there is that God took the human body as a glove. So that means God is one, thank God, and that one God enters into the body of a human being. However, this is not the Christian doctrine after all, because the Christian doctrine proclaims there is a Father which is in heaven, then there is the Son which incarnates into Jesus and then there is the Holy Spirit through which the Father and the Son love each other into eternity. So therefore, no, it is not one God that incarnated into Jesus Christ. It was the Son part which is a personality of God. Yes, I know it's not confusing enough. God in human form, only God does that. That's what the Bible says. Jesus said to Peter, he said, flesh and blood hasn't revealed to you who I am, but my Father who is in heaven. So, so if you seek after God and say, yeah. God, you're the creator, if you have provided a savior to take the punishment for my sins and that eternal life is a free gift, please tell me, please show me. And the Bible says, if we seek him with all our heart, we'll surely find him. And Jesus said, you'll know the truth and the truth will make you free. Do you believe in the devil? Absolutely. And I do believe in the words of Jesus. He who seeks shall find. Seek the truth and the truth shall set you free. And this is exactly what I did. I read the whole Bible. I read the whole Quran. And ultimately, Alhamdulillah, I've been guided to Islam, to the worship of one God. I do believe in the devil. The Bible says Satan will try and blind your mind to the good news that God has provided everlasting life as a free gift. And I hope today that you'll think yeah, about this what you want. a deep sense of surprise. This surely doesn't come from Satan. You don't know when Satan. you're going to die. You can do what and you want. And I don't want you to be trusting in your own goodness to save you, but Bye -bye. in God's kindness in providing a savior. You've been very gracious to listen to me today. May I give you a book that I've written? Yes, absolutely. It's called Scientific Facts in the Bible. And I think this is very beautiful. And I, um, how do I say this? That's good. You're very passionate about what you do, and you put it in a book, and I admire that. Well, I'm so pleased. Do you think you'll read it? Um, I absolutely think I will read it. I would love to see the perspective of what you have to say and what's the truth about the matter of it. I would love to see where you get your ideas from and where you get your thoughts and your beliefs from. Fair enough. Alright, so this is it for today's video. Another manipulative, disingenuous man going to young Muslim girls here trying to attack their faith. The sister over here, however, stood her ground and was very kind and very respectful. Nevertheless, the idea is that if you are so convinced of your religion and you converted 50 years ago, you've been studying for 50 years, why are you not up on a panel? Why don't you discuss with Islamic scholars? This is where the real discussion should happen and not on the street with a young girl that probably doesn't know enough about her own religion and about Christianity. There are Muslim scholars that study the Bible as well. They have master PhDs in Bible studies. So why don't you discuss with them? This is nothing but a cheap shot and the ever-repeating appeal to emotion. All right, guys, but this is it for today's video. If you liked it, leave it a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed already, guys, please do so. And if you want to support this channel via Patreon, for example, or by getting our merch, all the links are in the description box below. Thank you so much for your ongoing support, guys. And as always, may God bless you all. Much love and peace.